In this video, we're going to take a look at some properties of numbers, namely inverses and identities. Let's start with inverses, and the first one is called the additive inverse. The additive inverse, what they are is whatever we would add to a number to make it be zero. So in other words, if we have negative three, what would we add to negative three to make it be zero? Well, we would add three, and then we would get zero. So additive inverses are two numbers that when you add them together, we end up with zero. Okay? Then the second inverse that we're going to look at is called the multiplicative inverse. And the multiplicative inverse, another name for that is the reciprocal. So if we have, let's say for example, two-thirds, and we want the multiplicative inverse, we would flip that and we would have 3 over 2. Now, the interesting thing about multiplicative inverses is if we multiply them, we end up with 1. So we could multiply straight across or you could simplify. Either way, we would end up with 6 over 6, which is simplifies to 1. So additive inverses, add them, get 0. Multiplicative inverses, we multiply them and we get 1. So let's just look at a few examples here and pick out the additive inverse and the multiplicative inverse of these numbers. So first one, negative 5. What would I add to negative 5 to get 0? Well, I would add 5. So the additive inverse is 5. The multiplicative inverse of negative 5 would be the flip, the reciprocal. So the reciprocal, well, 5 negative 5, excuse me, as a fraction is negative 5 over 1. If I flip that, I end up with negative 1 fifth. So there's my multiplicative inverse. All right, so notice the sign stays the same on the multiplicative inverse. On the additive inverse, the sign goes to the, be the opposite. So then we go to 1 half. Additive inverse, what would we add to 1 half to get 0? Well, we would add negative one-half. That would give us zero if we added those together. The multiplicative inverse, the flip, in this case we would get two over one, or just two. All right, this last one over here, we have negative two-thirds. What do we add to get zero? Well, we would add positive two-thirds. And the multiplicative inverse, the flip, we would have negative three over 2. If we multiplied those, we would end up with 1. And just one thing of note here, with the fraction, remember that that negative sign, it could be on the top number or the bottom number or out front. I like to keep mine on the top number so I don't lose track of it, but these are the same things. Okay? All right, then additive identity and the multiplicative identity. The identities are where we do an operation to a number and we keep the same number. We're left with the same exact number. So what can we add to any number and be left with the same number? Well, that is zero. So the additive identity, just a quick example of that, would be like four plus zero. Well, that's still four. So if we add zero, we end up with the same thing that we started with. Multiplicative identity, the same idea, identity says we're going to get the same number out. So what number can I multiply by any number and get the same thing out? Well, that would be 1. So 3 times 1, for example, would be equal to 3. Now, just some uses for those things. The multiplicative identity especially, when we're converting fractions to have different denominators, we use the multiplicative identity. So as an example, let's say we have 3 fourths, and I want to convert that to a fraction, let's say um, something over 12. Well, what I do is 4 times 3 on the bottom, that gets me the 12, and then I do the same thing on the top, which would be 9. So notice right here, we have, what did we really multiply by? Well, we multiplied creatively by 1, 3 over 3. So that's an example where we use the multiplicative identity quite frequently. Um, back to the inverses, 
we make use of the multiplicative inverse whenever we're dividing fractions. Remember that multiplying by the reciprocal is the same thing as dividing. So that's when we use the multiplicative inverse quite frequently. And the additive inverse, we use that when we're solving equations. As for an, as an example, if we have like x minus 3 equals 5, well, I got to get rid of that negative 3. What would get rid of the minus 3? Well, plus 3, okay? These are additive inverses of each other, like so. So we end up with x equals 8. So some of these properties, some names to things that we actually use quite frequently in math. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.